Believe it or not, you can actually get calcium deposits in the rotator cuff of your shoulder. Who knew? Who knew? I'm Dr. Paul Zalzo. I'm Dr. Brad Wing. Welcome to Talking With Docs. We have, uh, we have a guest today, Dr. Marcus Bischoff. We were all residents together like a zillion years ago. It's so nice that you could join us. Marcus, thanks for coming. I have to thank you. Uh, Actually, right now, take thank you. Here we go. 25 years ago, we were medical students together, and you said, hey, Paul, we should do orthopedics. It'll be fun. I had another specialty all lined up, and you were right. It was a lot of fun, so thank you. I'm so sorry, Paul. I, I know you wanted to become a cardiovascular <laughs> surgeon. I think you probably would have already been retired by now, so I, I'm so sorry. No, you were right. This is fun. I had a good it's ride. A, I appreciate it. It's been a great it. career. Yeah, we've had fun. We were medical students together. Can you imagine that? We also share the same birthday. We do. I know. Different year. Same Slightly birthday. Different. Yeah. That's why. So we're, today we're talking about um, calcific tendonitis. So inflammation of the tendon with some calcium deposit. And we're talking about this in the shoulder. So let's start at the beginning. What, what is it, Marcus? Yeah, it's, it's an entity we know actually relatively little about. We don't okay. fully understand as to why some individuals have it and others don't. Okay. Um, I don't want to get too technical about it. It's one of the reasons or one of the theories as to what happens is the cells that normally form scar tissue, fibroblasts in the shoulder, get a mutation and become chondrocytes, which is a uh, cartilage type forming cell. And in, its, in this process, it can uh, develop calcium deposits. And it's most commonly seen in the rotator cuff of the shoulder. Okay. We don't understand exactly why that happens, so to be completely honest with you. You know what I find funny about the whole thing is these same people get osteoporosis. Not, not the same, but in the same age group, you can get osteoporosis. Like, I can't put calcium in my bones, but I can put in the soft yeah. tissues in my shoulder. It's in the wrong spot. Right? You should take it out of the shoulder into the bones. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. Transplant it. <laughs> that doesn't happen. So calcific tendonitis. Risk factors for this, same as other shoulder issues, diabetes, thyroid issues, uh, and typically middle age. Correct. Yeah, this. it happens and usually we see it in individuals 30, 40, 50 years of okay. age. More common in females than males. Okay. So for no reason that we understand. How do I know I have this? It usually presents itself uh, very gradually. There's no preceding injury or anything like that. It, uh, it starts very gradually with pain mm -hmm. and subsequent difficulty moving the arm. And again, pain mostly at night. Patients describe difficulty laying on that arm and using the arm. Sounds a bit like frozen shoulder. Is it, uh, the is only difference is that uh, these individuals don't necessarily have inherent stiffness of the shoulder. Okay. Now they may say that they can't use the shoulder because it's so painful to move, but they actually have no limitation in terms of movements of their shoulder. But it also sounds to me like rotator cuff tennis, just kind of garden variety rotator cuff tendonitis. So, so you got this pain, you got some trouble at night, you go to your doctor, they do a physical exam and they find the things that you that you've talked about. Is there any way to distinguish the two? How do you, how do you say this one's got rotator cuff tendonitis, this one has calcific tendonitis? Yeah, you're right. Clinically, it's very difficult to, to differentiate between the two. So the diagnosis is usually made by getting an x-ray. Okay. If you get an x-ray of the shoulder, you can see a calcium deposit in the area of the rotator cuff. And also it can be confirmed by ultrasound as well. Okay, so normally you see calcium in the bones. You would not see them in the soft tissue. So this is abnormal calcification. It's ectopic, it's not where it's supposed to be. Is it typically more in the muscle or more in the tendon or more at the junction? It's mostly in the tendon. Okay. So the rotator cuff is a group of muscles that come from the shoulder blade. They form a almost continuous tendon that attaches to the ball portion of the shoulder. And right. it's in that tendon portion just before it attaches to the humeral head or the ball portion of the shoulder. Okay. Okay, it sounds painful because you're not supposed to have calcium in that supple cuff that's moving around as you move your shoulder. We've talked about what you present with, what the doctor's going to do to diagnose it, uh, or the healthcare professional. Now, how can I treat this painful entity? Uh, we usually start with anti-inflammatory medications uh, followed by physiotherapy. Those are two good hallmarks to try to keep uh, the motion going in the shoulder, try to build up some strength in the shoulder. The anti-inflammatories help to uh, decrease the swelling or inflammation in, uh, in that uh, rotator cuff tendon and that space. Okay, and does that work all the time? Is that successful? It works sometimes, okay. to be completely honest with you. Um, in, in many cases, these rotator cuff calcific tendonitis are, take a long time to improve. And so what happens is if they're frustrated, it's not helping with anti-inflammatories or physiotherapy, then we offer uh, additional treatments. One of the treatments is injections. Okay. Um, we can sometimes inject cortisone into that area, although there is some controversy whether that actually slows down or, or 
uh, minimizes the resorption that occurs okay. of the calcium deposits. So, so it might help symptomatically, indicated. but it might prolong the recovery? Absolutely correct. Okay. Another form of treatment is called shockwave treatment. It's okay. an ultrasound probe done through physiotherapy clinics or other uh, clinics, chiropractic clinics. And it's essentially a similar idea as how they blast kidney stones. Right, you've heard of that. Lithotripsy, exactly. Yeah. A similar idea. Okay. You can uh, uh, apply it to the uh, area of calcium buildup in the shoulder and it can blast. These ultrasound waves can hit that calcific deposit and can uh, break it down. Does that work? Sometimes. Okay. <laughs> Okay. Sometimes. I think I this is, why, this is why I became a knee surgeon, because I feel like shoulders are so tricky, right? It's mm, so yeah. hard mm. to get them better. It requires numerous treatments, and it, I, I have seen quite a bit of success with okay. it, but I would not sit there and say it works every time. Okay, okay. so we've, we've tried cortisone. That's an option. That shockwave therapy we've tried. Any surgical options for There are surgical options. I should just mention one more form of treatment. It's called fine needling. It's usually done under interventional radiology. Okay. Uh, and the way it works is they use an ultrasound, and it's a diagnostic ultrasound to localize the calcium deposit. Then they inject, they take a long needle right into it, usually with a bit of lidocaine and saline, so a bit of freezing, to try to break down that calcium deposit. I think that's a good point. So how, how big are these collections? Are we talking about five millimeters, like three centimeters? Like what, what is it? Yeah, right, size? actually that's a good good range. It's usually from five millimeters. It, if it's too small, you can't really see it on right. the x-ray, but let's say at five millimeters, sometimes they're two, three centimeters. Okay, so they can be quite big. They're quite large, yeah. Okay. And, and because they're so large and it's hard, it causes impingement in the shoulder. Right, so having a pebble in your shoulder. Exactly, so with certain movements that calcium deposit will rub against the roof of the bone of the shoulder, which we call the acromion, and causes pain. That seems like that would hurt. All right, so get this pebble out of here. What's the surgical <laughs> options here? The way we treat it surgically is uh, we, we do an anesthetic. It's day surgery. The patient come in some, comes in the morning almost the same day. We put them to sleep, and we do it arthroscopically. So we take a small camera, introduce it into the shoulder joint. The first thing we always do is look around the shoulder to see if there's any other uh, pathology that's going on. And then we look at the rotator cuff, both from the bottom and from the top. And usually when we look at it from the top, you can most of the time identify and see the calcium deposits. Do you have a video? That I shows do have it? a video. All right, let's look let's at it. Let's take a look at it. So here you can see that you can identify the calcium and then we take a long needle and literally poke into it. And, and the idea is to try to break apart some of these calcium deposits. Uh, in some, sometimes this calcium deposit can be quite liquid, almost like a toothpaste type material. Okay. So when, oh, you, yeah. when, so when you poke into it, it can almost come out of it. Watch you can see it in this video, you can see it a little bit better. So we poke into it and it, and it can sort of come out of the, out of the tendon like a drilling. little bit. Like you're drilling. So, and then we have uh, the surgery is done under um, fluid irrigation and suction. So we can suck out the calcium deposits that we try to I pull out of the tendon. Yeah, it's, called, it's called barbitage. Mm, it's, a, it's a French word. Not to be Did confused with... Barbarella? No, not to be confused with balayage, oh. which is a way to highlight a woman's hair in a, like, a oh. wave-like fashion. I have three women in my house. Or so Bollywood. Very Bollywood. There I'm you go. learning so much. There you go. <laughs> have you ever tried using a woodpecker to do that? <laughs> <laughs> All right. So you so that's a surgical option. How successful is that? Yeah, do you want I should let me show you one more video here. This is sometimes when we go in there we can pull out these oh, wow. deposits. Now the problem with this is at uh, times when we remove these calcium deposits. You're we, making a hole. We can leave the tendon, there's you're left with a tendon a hole in the tendon itself. And right. if the hole is big enough then we end up having to repair that. At the time. Enough to, we do it all at the same of time. Course. Yeah. So you're you are creating a hole in it, but it's important to remove those calcium deposits because they certainly are a source of pain. Um, You're kind of robbing Peter to pay Paul, which, which normally I, like. I'm okay with. <laughs> in this case, you want to fix that. Okay, so post-op, what are these people doing? They're resting for a little bit and then get them into physiotherapy? It depends a little bit on if we have to do a repair or not. The right. post-operative uh, protocol varies quite a bit. So let's assume we did not have to do a repair. Yep. Uh, we usually keep them in sling for about a week or so at most just to allow the initial pain to settle down. Then we get them into physiotherapy, get the shoulder moving. We encourage early mobility to prevent a frozen shoulder, yep. prevent stiffening, and try to regain their motion. It takes a bit of time for them to improve. Okay. Uh, shoulders don't recover super quickly. It's usually in the time frame about six to eight weeks. Most people are pretty good from after this operation. Does this come back again? Does it recur? Or once it, you it, it rarely does, to be honest okay. with you. Uh, and that's why the surgery is quite successful. Once you've removed those calcium deposits, uh, most of the time people do quite well moving forward. 
Hey, if you've had calcific tendonitis or know someone who has, leave a comment. Let us know what they did to treat it. That'll help our other viewers who are watching this or maybe not watching this and just looking at the comments. There you go. All right. Now you know, if you like this video, please like it, subscribe to our channel, share it. Shout out to Bill and Sandra. Bill and Sandra, <laughs> we love you. Bill Keep watching. Sandra. Thanks, Bill and Sandra. Thanks for lending us your son-in-law. Yeah. <laughs> and remember, you are in charge of your own health. We'll see you next time. Thanks for coming, Marcus. Thanks, guys.